Hi everybody, this is Angelo Quinones and you reach Iron Ministries. Iron Ministries is designed to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holy and inspired word, the Bible. And you reach the full Greek construction series where we, we, we're we trying to check out every verse that comes into play when we're dealing with so-called uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay, so that's what we're doing. We're looking at the, you know, the Greek. We're looking at the Hebrew, what it has to do with the Hebrew. For example, um, you know, Proverbs, uh, what, chapter 8, and then they say around verse 30 or 31 or something like that, you know, that um, you have brought me forth, you know, and then um, we see in the early part of the chapter that it's talking about she, she, and a her. So it can't be Christ, because Christ is a he, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm going to look at that um, in my next study. And I want to look at the Greek of the old of the of the Old Testament and the New Testament, and the Hebrew of the Old Testament, and we'll see what makes the construction uh, a feminine uh, construction. Okay, that's 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 the key, and that's something that I didn't know when I spoke to Tony from Florida, and um, you know what really got me into the full Greek construction as we look at you know um, uh, Second Peter chapter one verse one. What really got me in a full Greek construction, a whole, you know, full Hebrew construction, so we won't be ashamed uh, when we're dealing with Jehovah's Witnesses, is that, you know, one day I was speaking um, to Tony from Florida, and, um, you know, we were talking about Proverbs chapter 8, you know, verse 30, you know, and, and so, um, you know, and then I, I brought him to, uh, you know, verses 1, 2, like that. I said she, she, and her, or her, her, and she, okay, <laughs> she cries, or her, her voice, and then I said in the text, well, this is the English text, and it says, you know, she cries, or her voice, and then he looked at the lexicon, and he didn't see anything that is like a, a female construction in, 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 the, he, they, in the Hebrew, and I didn't know how to read Hebrew. So I said, well, the only thing I have is English over here. I mean, it says she cries. But he's looking at the lexical form, and the lexical form is not going to have cola. Okay, it's not going to have that hey. It's not going to have that H at the end of a Hebrew word making a um, making that kind of a, 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 of a verb, in, you know, that is, that is a female a gender that's doing the crying or whatever the case may be or the calling or whatever. And so I didn't know how to do that at that time. Um, so I, I didn't know Hebrew. I didn't know how to read Hebrew. And from then on, I said, I'm going to buy a Hebrew Bible. And man, I'm going to learn Hebrew um, to the best of my ability. Because I didn't, I didn't go to college. And, um, you know, I didn't go to school. When, when, I, when, I took, when I went to Nyack Theological Seminary, I didn't go to Greek class or Hebrew class. I, I learned these things on my own. You know, with the help of, of uh, instructors and, and, and video series and audio series and things like that. And, and because when you go to school, you, you actually, you know, you have maybe one or two, not, not maybe, but uh, at least one textbook, sometimes two, sometimes three, sometimes even four. Like, uh, you know, um, a Professor uh, Lindell uh, O'Hara's. O'Hara, um, she, you know, the, the history teacher in Nyack Theological Seminary, she she had four textbooks for us, Communist Manifesto, I mean, you know, uh, uh, Eli Whitney or something like that, you know, on the Holocaust, you know, whatever, you know, famous name, and I just can't remember it now, uh, Eli Whitney, uh, it's, it's, it's a great book, and some other books and sauces, I mean, so, you know, in college, you're going to have your, your textbooks and stuff like that, and I mean, the thing about learning on your own and some people do this, you know, uh, is that it's unlimited. You're not limited to just one textbook or whatever the case may be. You can have several textbooks and, and stuff like that. And, and, you know, it's just really personal. You could put on a, a, a DVD or a, or a YouTube uh, channel and you could just really, you know, um, you can't ask questions or stuff like that unless you go to online class and you could just, just you know, put it, put it over and over and over again until you get it into your head, you know? So I didn't even know in my life what was uh, the accusative case construction and, and, and 
why is it they on and why is it they us and I, I I get it a little bit when they, when God is doing something is always they us you know I mean you know but then it's they on well, what's that all about and then it's they oh and I kind of noticed even when I didn't even know Greek almost at all well then you know when something belongs to God it's really always they oh the Church of God and then it goes to they oh <laughs> okay anyway. So hopefully this series is going to help you out, and I can't speak that, you know, maybe clearly or loudly because my baby is sleeping right beside me over here, you know what I'm saying? All right, so um, it's early in the morning here in the, in the Philippines, and then I'll give you a, a Greek word, Kalimera, which means uh, good morning in Greek, Kalimera, and so that's just the deal, Kalimera. And I can say post by how's it going in, in modern Greek? Well, let's get to this. Now that you know a little bit about why I got into this stuff, okay, meaning the original languages, you know, the, the back of the clock of the of the Bible, if you will, you know, of our English or whatever translation, Spanish or whatever, you know, you're using, you know. Well, let's get into it because it can save our necks when we're dealing with, with Jehovah's Witnesses. Only the Holy Spirit can set these people free, okay? He is a person, whether people like it or not. And so this is the deal. So we're looking at the full Greek construction of Titus chapter 2, verse 13. And basically, um, except for a little bit of uh, wording here and th here or there, you know, Second Peter chapter uh, 1, verse 1 actually has the same construction. And uh, Sharp's rule applies. So we'll check that out. And we'll check out when it doesn't apply. Okay, so that's it. All right, now um, let's deal with this verse. And it says over here in Second Peter chapter uh, one verse one, it says Simon Peter, a servant, uh, Simon, Peter, uh, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who, um, through the righteousness, through the righteousness of our God and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, have uh, received. A faith precious as ours. Well, I mean, the context is different, end quote, by the way. The context is, is different. Over here, it, it talks about the blessing of the believer, what we have received. Okay, what we have received. And um, it, it tells us basically the same thing that, that Jesus is our, our God and Savior. But it tells you something different. It's not talking about, you know, that we're waiting for a uh, hope. And uh, bless the blessed hope and the appearing of our great God and Savior, or our great God, even our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's, that's a different context. But, you know, the same thing remains in the text, okay? Our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, is basically the same thing. Uh, two different apostles, the Apostle Paul wrote Titus chapter 2, verse 13, and Peter, okay, um... Who confirms Paul actually in this uh, 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 epistle, in this letter in chapter 3, actually writes the same construction. You know, and now, and you can say, well, Sharp wasn't around at the time of Paul or Peter. Well, uh, Sir Isaac Newton wasn't around when, you know, God created gravity, but then he came along and made us understand it a little bit more better. Okay, it's just the same thing. Right. Galileo didn't invent, you know, eyesight, but he made us, you know, see things a little bit more closer with the, with the telescope. You know what I'm saying? So he didn't invent the stars, but he brought us closer to the stars, if you will. OK, so every everybody who invented things is just making us making us enjoy things a little bit more differently and understand things a little bit more differently. OK. All right. So, I mean, everybody always been traveling on it, in wagons and stuff like that, but the guy came along and invented the car. So, it's basically the same thing. You see, those things were around a long time before, you know, anyone popped on the scene. Gravity, stars, I mean, you know, electricity. Uh, we don't, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't say that uh, Benjamin Franklin, you know, discovered electricity. Or, or invented it, I should say. He just discovered it. It was always there. You know what I'm saying? So he just discovered it. I mean, you know, so I mean, it's just that, uh, you know, Christopher Columbus, I mean, you know, there's a lot of stuff going around him okay, these days. Whether he uh, discovered America or not, I mean, somebody did, 
but America was there before he, you know, discovered it. So these things were already in the text of Scripture uh, before Sharpe's rule came into the picture. You know, having been born in 1735 and dying in 1813, okay, the son of a clergyman, and uh, you know, uh, a lin he was a linguist uh, in Hebrew and Greek. So he noticed there's a consistency here, okay, and uh, that's found all throughout the, the pages of her Holy uh, 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 wrote. So he wrote a certain rules that are very consistent all throughout. All right, now um, getting that, getting rid of that, uh, this notion that well, you know, Sharp just went around the Bible, you know, combing the Bible just to see if he could invent some rules also to appease the, the Trinitarians. That's not that's not like that at all. Okay, these rules apply, you know, inside, you know, you know, according to the Bible and. And uh, when you're reading the Bible, when you're reading, uh, you know, uh, Greek outside of the Bible. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Okay, so over here again, it says, uh, Simon Peter, I'll just read the, the, the first part of the verse. Simon Peter, a, a servant uh, and apostle of Jesus Christ, uh, to those who, through the righteousness of our God, and Savior Jesus Christ have received a faith, okay, precious as ours. I just read the whole thing, I mean, you know, so. Now, we have received Christ's righteousness. He's made unto us righteousness, okay? He's made unto us Wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Now, it's not that he is wisdom, okay? And Jehovah's Witnesses like to use that verse. I believe in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse uh, 30. Oh, it says he's wisdom there. It doesn't say he's wisdom. He's made unto us wisdom. Unto us. And he's made also righteousness for us. He's made unto us righteousness. Now, we have his righteousness. On the cross, he gave us his righteousness for free. It's a free gift. Righteousness. Now, this is a whole, bunch of, these are a, whole, there are a whole bunch of clues in the context. This is talking about Jesus here. It says, Simon Peter, okay, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. You see? He's mentioned there. To those, he's mentioned twice in the text, to, to those who, through, okay, the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now let's look at let's look at the rule, Sharp's rule. Let's check this out. We're gonna to have to go to the Greek for this. So let's go to this app over here because basically it's the same thing, Byzantine text form, which this basically is, and another form um, like um, this app over here. And basically, I could queue them up. I can't do them side by side now because I don't just I don't have the equipment over here in the Philippines to do that. But um, hopefully one day I can I can I can you know I can do that. What over here basically says Sumeon, Sumeon Petros or Petros, but I like to use a biblical pronunciation. Okay, I mean I I know the modern pronunciation. I just got to remember my diphthongs. Okay, <laughs> you know I understand. I I, I remember the K. Uh, sort of a thing, you know, and the E, they like the E and the N and the, and the O. They love those, um, you know, pronunciations, or modern Greeks do. Uh, Sumeon, it says over here, Sumeon Petras. Uh, du, uh, it says over here, Dulas Kai Apostolos. Uh, Jesu Christu. Uh, tois. And it's a... Uh, Timan is a Timan Hemin. It says over here, Lacha Lachusin. It says over here, Lachusin, uh, Piston, and uh, Dikai Asin, Dikai Asune. Over here, I'm using a magnifying glass, guys. Tu Theu, Tu Theu, Hemon Kai, and Soteras. Jesus Christ. It says over here. Let's just stop there, you know. Well, anyway, it stops there because verse 2 is, 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 is next. Okay. 
So over here, and uh, basically, let me just go to this app because this app is a little bit more, you know, bigger, wider, clearer. You know what I mean? So this is just this is, this is, this is the, the print, the font is just impeccable in this app. You understand? Look at look at the difference here. And for me, being legally blind, it's absolutely perfect. <laughs> okay, you understand what I'm saying? Now you could you could rearrange the font here, and so that's just the deal. <clears throat> now it's this app. Okay, if you want to, to get it. Um, let me just go to the screen and you see it, okay, right under my Facebook stuff. You see Facebook and Messenger there in, in the little folder? Right underneath that, you see that guy? That's right here. That's that's it right there. All right. So that's just it. So let me just look at Petros again. Oh, Petru. Actually, it's in the genitive case construction, the title there. Petru, spelled out B, Epsilon, Tau, Rho, Omicron. Upsilon, Omicron, Epsilon, Beta. Now it's called Beta. I mean, you know, that's what the B is called. All right. So it says over here, um, uh, Sumeon. Okay, Sumeon is Simon, right? In Greek, it's Sumeon. Actually, in modern Greek, it would be something like this. Simeon, actually. So that, that little U... That nowadays that's an I class, but in biblical Greek it's a it's a it's a U class, okay. And so the strange looking sort of like E, that's a capital S actually, okay. That is right next to the one. Remember that you read Greek from left to right, never from uh, right to left unless you're breaking up, you're, you're parsing up the word and stuff like that, you know. You're parsing a word. I don't have to say parsing up, okay. <laughs> Uh, it says over here, um, that's a capital uh, sigma or S, a strange looking E, a capital shaped letter, you know, like a lopsided M, you know, capital M, you know what I'm saying? So that's a, so I'll transliterate it, you have a S, U, M, E, O, and an N. Now remember, we're going to have, like, when, when I was looking at this for the first time in Greek, okay, first of all, I couldn't even find, uh, uh, um, you know, Second Peter. I couldn't even find the Acts of the Apostles. Forget about that. I mean, you know, Praxis Apostolon. <laughs> Who's going to be able to find that? And the Book of Romans. So that's just the deal. I mean, a capital P looking letter is actually not a, a P, but a, but a R, but an R. I mean, you know, that's, that's the thing. So over here, it says... Um, Sumeon spelled out S U M E O N. Now wait a minute. O N N. I see like a W N, a W V. Well, the W looking letter. There is no W in Greek. Okay. So there, you know, that's an omega, um, the so-called last letter of the uh, Greek alphabet. Uh, incidentally, if you know your Greek alphabet, you already know like ninety percent of Coptic alphabet, of the Coptic alphabet, the Egyptian, you know, alphabet. Okay, which has like 32 letters or something like that. I mean, you're on your way there. And so um, the W looking letter is an O like in the word home. Okay, that's a long O in Biblical Greek. And then the V looking letter is not a V. It's ne you, you, if you're looking at a, a, a V looking letter, small V looking letter in Greek is never a V. There's, there's, no, there's no such thing. There's no V in Biblical Greek. You have a V in, in modern Greek, but none... You know, none of that in, in, in Biblical Greek. So you don't have to worry about a V, okay, because there, there is no V, okay? And so uh, that's an N, that's an N, uh, that's an N in, uh, that's an N in, uh, in uh, that's called, uh, that's called uh, Nu in Biblical Greek. Sorry about that because somebody put the music on, <laughs> I couldn't concentrate. So that's uh, that V looking letter is always an N like in Nancy. Okay, so uh, Sumeon. Okay, Sumeon. And then we have uh, and then we have Petros. Uh, then we have uh, the P. The P. Hun, can you just slow down just a little bit? Cause I'm just studying the Bible for a second. Hun, just a little bit. Oh yeah, that's okay. Um. That's my fault. I didn't tell you, honey. I'm sorry, my law. And so, um, and so the P-looking, the P-looking letter is, uh, not the P-looking letter, but the, the strange sort of building-shaped letter, capital letter, is under the, the one. 
Okay, that's a, that's a capital P. Okay, I know it doesn't look like a P. It looks like sort of like a temple or something like that, right? I call it like a table. And uh, that's a P in Greek, okay? That's a P in, in Greek. And, and the smaller version of the P looks like that a little bit also. So you have after that E, T, you know, Epsilon, Tau. Nowadays called Tough to Tau, you know. And then um, after that's a P-looking letter. It's not a P. So if you're looking at a P-looking letter in Greek, it's never a P. It's an R. So it's a Hro, okay? And then, uh, and then you have the OS, you know, the Omicron and Sigma, final Sigma. The Omicron, that o, nowadays it's called Omicron. So, I mean, you know, there are differences um, in how you say the name of a letter nowadays. Um, but basically, some of the letters are the same, meaning are the same pronunciation, you know. So, um, the first the first name, uh, Sumeon, is spelled out Sigma Upsilon Mu, sometimes pronounced Mu, nowadays pronounced Me, the name. Then Epsilon Omega Nu, okay? So, Su Me On. Su Me On. Su Me On. Su Me On. And then you have Petras. Petras. Okay, so you have P, Epsilon, Tau, Rho, Omicron, Sigma. Then you have a comma there. And then it says that he's a, he's a, a servant, a slave, a bond servant. Okay? Dulas. Dulas. And then it looks like a D-O-U, a little bit like an L, right? It's, it looks like an upside down Y, doesn't it, though? Okay, and... Um, let me see over here. Font size. <laughs> and the upside down oh, uh, Y looking letters in L in Greek. And then you have the O and the S, uh, Omicron and Sigma. So you have uh, Dulas. So you have Dulas there, servant or slave. You know, Delta, Omicron, Upsilon, Lambda, Omicron, Final Sigma. And then after that, you have your Chi. That's going to be very important um, coming up. Uh, a Chi, okay? Because that's part of the rule, okay? So the Chi is uh, equal to our and, or our and is equal to the chi, okay? And uh, that could be translated, not in, you know, not in here, all these, you know, possibilities, but, you know, also even both. Uh, and is used to translate this Greek word chi. Now they pronounce ge in modern Greek. You don't say chi, you say ge. And so that's uh, kappa, alpha, iota. And um, two floors underneath the one, so Kappa Alpha Iota or K A I, that's Kai. And then after that you have the word for apostle. A Ba Sta Las. Okay. Apostolos. And uh <coughs> excuse me, um is actually A P O S T O L O S R Alpha B Omicron Sigma Tau Omicron, which is the O, right? Lambda, <coughs> Omicron, final sigma. So this man, this, 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 this servant of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is called not only a servant, but an apostle. Apostle of Jesus Christ. Okay, it's one who was sent uh, by God. And, and John the Evangelist, or actually John the Baptist, was also called, okay, an apostle. In the sense that he was sent, as someone that was sent from God. Same Greek word, basically. <clears throat> so it says over here, um, Sumeon, Sumeon Petros, and let me just get rid of that over here. Sumeon Petros, uh, Dulos, Kai, Apostolos, uh, Yesu Christu. So it has over here, Yesu, and then Christu, of Jesus Christ. So, and both of them are in the genitive case construction, and you have the, the nominative case here, and the dative case here. Two cases in Greek. So the nominative case, okay, is uh, the, the case of designation. And uh, you see that um, the, the status of someone here, the status of, of Simon Peter, that he is a servant and, Greek or Kai, and in Hebrew will be va, right, or wa for and. In Spanish it will be e, right, uh, 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 serviente, uh, serviente, e, you know, and, right? So he is something. So he is, he is uh, 
two things here. He's, he's a servant and he is an apostle because he saw Jesus. That's the qualification of being an apostle. This idea that Fred Price or whatever his name is, I mean, you know, he's like, he sounds like a guy from the Price is Right, you know, that he's, he's an apostle because he calls himself an apostle. It doesn't make you an apostle just because you're an apostle, that, that, just because you call yourself an apostle. I hope I got that right, you know. Just because he calls himself an apostle doesn't mean hey, he's an apostle. I mean, this is, you know, I mean, you could call yourself a whole, you know, David Berkowitz. So what's his name? The, the, no, well, that's the son of Sam Darby. <laughs> okay, he's like, was anyway. But David Caress, I mean, you know, um, you know, a lot of people who, who got themselves into trouble in life are called David, you know, be careful with that, you know. King David, I mean, you know, a man after God's own heart, but still, completely different from, you know, a Solomon who was a, a man of peace. David was a man of war, you know. But a lot of people called David, David, you know, Caress, I mean, in Texas. I'm just saying. I'm sorry if your name is David out there. You know, this is, this is in the Bible. But he called himself what a servant of God, and then and he was sleeping with children and stuff like that, whatever the case may be. And you know, and you know, and that was the end of it. You know, Waco, Texas. You know what I'm saying? So you could call yourself a whole bunch of things, and we can't stop Jehovah's Witnesses from calling themselves Jehovah's Witnesses. We can't stop that. You know, we can only expose them through the light of the word of God, you know, so. So it says over here, uh, Sumeon a Petros Tulas Kai Apostolos Jesu Christu. And it says over here, uh, toys uh, to those. So that's used like, uh, that's used as like a, like a pronoun. Remember that the our article is called a weak demonstrative. So it could be a pronoun, you know, to those, you know. To those, toys. And that's an article. Well, the article is not just a the, you know, in Greek. I mean, it's more, much more elastic than that, says Dan Wallace. I use the word flexible. Toys, okay? Toys, toys, toys. You understand what I'm saying? For the 24 article paradigm, uh, paradigm means much more than just model. I mean, it's a philosophical thing. It's a deep thing. It's how you perceive things to be. That's what a paradigm is when you get down to it, you know. But we'll just call it model or example for now, you know, a paradigm. Okay, and the paradigm for the article, I mean, you got 24 articles in, in the article paradigm. Incidentally, there is no indefinite article paradigm in Biblical Greek. So, therefore, there isn't any indefinite article in John 1.1c. There isn't no anas, mia, and ana like in modern Greek. You have an indefinite, you know, you have, and you have your indefinite article paradigm in modern Greek, but none according to biblical Greek. You know what I'm saying? So it's twice, uh, spelled out T-O-I-S. There you go, right there. Tau for the T, right? Nowadays called tough, but, you know, it's called two different things, but it's, it's a T. In biblical Greek, it's called Tau. In modern Greek, it's called tough. Like, I'm tough, man, you know? And then in Hebrew, there's a couple of T's, the Tet, the Tau, right? So, and uh, so you have the Omicron, nowadays called Omicron, and then you have your I, S, or E, O, the Sigma, final Sigma. And after that, you have uh, um, Isati, Asati Man, okay? And it has the word equal in there, Esa, or, you know, that's the word for equal. So, I mean, <clears throat> you, see the, you see the word right here for equal. Let's, let's check this app over here so we can see it. So we can see the translation of this app over here. I hope I have it queued up the same way, and I don't think so, though, but... Because I was studying the way to be saved yesterday. Uh, not, not the way to be saved yesterday, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yesterday I was studying the way to be saved. There you go. And so, the good thing about chapter 1, verse 1, you don't have to do anything. And see, the apostle of Jesus Christ. Okay, it says over here. 
to those and you see how the twice is used like, like a pronoun you see it's an article but it's used as, as, as a pronoun you know dative a uh, masculine uh plural from the plural part of the paradigm you know twice 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 like that like i said before equally it says over here equally precious well, you see the word equal there in uh in um in is uh, you see the word esos there in the beginning of the word you see esos you see it there and it's just like two words embedded in this in this greek word here precious and equal at the same time so you have equal the first part of this is equal and then after that you get the word precious okay no doubt that vines complete a suppository dictionary which i don't have it here in the philippines i left it in new york to my chagrin has this broken up very nicely and it says um with ours okay you have uh, hey mean from the hey Mace paradigm the first person personal pronoun from the plural part of the paradigm this is it this is an dative case no gender first person personal pronouns and second person personal pronouns have no gender it's only when you get to the third person personal pronouns and your relative pronouns and your demonstrative pronouns do you have you know gender and of course the articles have gender also so the first person personal pronouns and the second person personal pronouns like I and you don't have any gender, but they have number and case. This is an dative case, the case of designation, if you will, to use a manual grammar of the Greek New Testament by Dana and Manti. Spelled out eta, mu, iota, nu. Nowadays, it'll be called these letters, you know, eta, me, iota, ni. I mean, so, I mean, you know. But it's but I was gonna say they're the same things, but except for eta, it's not the same thing. It's a it's a here in biblical Greek is an e class, that n looking letter right below the w in the word with. That's an e class in biblical Greek, and that's what we're talking about nowadays. It's, it's an i class, you know, in modern Greek. And but then you got you still, you still got your m and an i and n. So I mean, you know, and that's with us. Okay, so that's a comforting thing that, I mean, we have a, 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 you know, we have the same blessings that the Apostle Paul had, and Peter, and James. I mean, the same, you know, we, we us, with us. It, it doesn't say that we have, you know, uh, you know uh, a faith greater than yours, or a righteousness is greater than yours. Well, we're under, we're, you know, we're in the same boat, no pun intended, because he walked out of the boat to walk on the water, you know. Now, it says over here, but we're walking on the water of life, okay? I mean, they, you know, they had it easy. They had the Lord Jesus with them in that boat. When there was a storm, and then when he was outside of the boat, he was there. He's there with us, but, you know, bliss, you know uh, blessed are those who have not seen and believed. You see? We walk by faith and not by sight. <clears throat> now, it says over here, um, um, righteousness, it says over here, the righteousness, but there's no article, dikai, uh, dikai, uh, Sune, that's in the dative case, and then, um, and then this is where we get to the, uh, this is where we get to the the rule, okay. So let's start with this. Let's put this in the middle of the screen, okay, and then make sure I have it bright and everything like that here, so we can see it, you know, clearly. I mean, it's a, it's very big big that's why even though this is a byzantine text form it basically says the same thing as the most ancient authorities now it says over here okay um let me get to the other words before i you know finish and uh equally precious is uh i s o t i m like in mary o n like in nancy or iota sigma omicron tau iota mu Amakran nu. Okay, the Hebrew M is actually mem, M-E-M, 
And then the Hebrew N is noon, like good afternoon, N-O-O-N. And what in the world happened to my app? Did you see that? It just went crazy. <clears throat> I'm my love. I'm sorry, guys, I have a bad cold. Isati, is, Isatiman, actually. The cute markers there. Isatiman. Isatiman. Uh, with us, Hemin, <clears throat> from Hemes, Hemes, uh, Hemon, Hemin, Hemas. Okay? With us, to us, you know, like that. And then you have Lahu Lahusi and then uh Piston and then um I believe that's received, isn't it though? Uh, Lambda Alpha Chi Amicron Upsilon Sigma Iota Okay obtained uh La Husi uh faith over here faith uh faith and it says over here uh piston p i s t i n or p e o t a sigma tau e o t a nu and then you have your greek preposition n Epsilon nu, right? It looks like F, doesn't it? But it's epsilon nu, and it says righteousness of Dick Guy U Sune is in the dative case, righteousness Delta Iota Kappa Alpha Iota Omicron Sigma Upsilon Nu Eta with the Iota subscript, but you don't pronounce that I, that's an improper diphthong. After that, you have the point of discussion, so let's get to it. This is the rule. It's the first rule of Sharp's rule. Now, this study comes under the umbrella of two different things. Okay, Sharp's rule and a full Greek construction, and that's why I'm just trying to teach you how to read it also, because this is not like the study on YouTube that when you when you say Sharp's rule, something is gonna pop up. That's a very nice study. Don't get me wrong. He did a beautiful job. He looks like he's a Trinitarian, down to earth Christian, a wonderful human being. A wonderful study. But what I do, I try to teach you how to read it so that, that way you know every single word, right? And then, um, you, you know, you could just discuss every single part of it. If you're talking to a Jehovah's Witness, he could, he, if he opens up his Greek New Testament and then you open up yours, you'll be on equal ground. No pun intended because it says over here, e equal, you know, esos or esos, you know, equal. Incidentally, you see the Greek word equal. Okay, all right, equalities, isa, a neuter plural, and, um, you know, that uh, he was equal with God, although being in the form of God, he did not count it, okay, equality with God, a thing to be, you know, held on to. But empty himself, so if he emptied himself, he emptied himself of of not the attributes but glory of the equality so if he emptied himself i mean he emptied himself of something that means he was equal right it, he was equal with god you know they are there in the dates of case right so that's another study altogether but i'm just saying if he emptied himself that means he had equality with god and in order to you know empty empty something from the cup okay you have to you have to empty you know, you have to have something in the cup to empty. But then it sh falls short there, that example, because he didn't, you know, empty himself of the attributes of the, the incommunicable attributes or the, you know, the uh, uh, communicable attributes of God, you know. Has in my faith the uhu parkon, who being in the form of God, he was in the form of God already, he's a present active participle. The own there is showing you the participial construction. So here, you know, he was equal with God at the time that the Apostle Paul was writing uh, that statement by commandment. All right, let's get back to this. The rule, listen, the rule of Sharp is that, you know, two nouns 
or participles. When two nouns or participles are connected by the copulative connective chi, the Greek word an, and the first noun has the article, like this one does, and the second one does not have the article, that means it's always speaking about one person. One, not two. It's not talking about God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ here. It's not. I'll give you an indication of that. But let me just stay with this over here, the, the construction. And, and it's an easy construction to read in Greek. Tu, and that's a genitive article, genitive and singular. Okay? Two genders share the same construction of tu. The neuter uh, gender and the masculine gender share the same construction. Okay? It's only when you get to the feminine construction that the construction is, is, is different. Taste. Like taste, you know, doxase, you know. You know what I mean? But tu, theu, is spelled, you know, the article is spelled out um, tau, avacron, upsilon, right? And then you have the word theu, the famous, you know, word theos, that appears more than 1,300 times in the Greek New Testament and well over 2,000 times in the Old Testament, the Greek Septuagint. You know what I mean? You know the you know the the article paradigm. Getting back to the article, ha he ta, tu te tu, to te to, tan ten ta. And then um, the plural is something like this: hoi hai ta with an alpha, ton ton ton, tois tois tois, and tus tas ta. Okay, those are the article paradigms. You know, so-called definite article, you know, that can be used for, I mean, right here, twice is used, you know, you know, a pronoun. To those. All right. Uh, um, so, so you have the article here and then you have a noun. Okay. Theu. So, you know, the, the, the theos paradigm, theos, theu, theo, theon, thee, and then theoi, theon, which doesn't appear in the Greek New Testament at all, theon, of the gods. I mean, this doesn't appear in the Greek New Testament. You have to go to Daniel chapter 2, verse 47 to see that you're the God, your God is the God of gods. They, they see theon there in the Greek Septuagint, but never in the New Testament, in the Greek New Testament. Theois theon, theois theus. Okay, so that's the, you know, the, the, the theos paradigm. And then you have, you know, your, your, you know, the feminine side of the paradigm, if you will. I mean, you know, I mean, God is, you know, and it's probably like thea, theos, thea, when you know the subscript and then theon, and then you have your, you know, plural part of the paradigm. And you see two of those constructions in uh, the Praxis Apostle on the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19. Thea and Thea, and you see there with an alpha, you know. <coughs> sort of sounds like the root of the masculine, Thea, you know. Thea, Thea, it sounds like accusative, but it's not. Tain is right in front of Thea in, the, in that construction. All right, so... Um, Tu theu. So you have an article here. You, 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 you have tu theu. Okay. Tu theu. Hey, Mo, that's not important for now. It's important for us because it's telling us that, that that's our God and Savior. But according to the formula, that's not necessary. Okay. Now, I heard the discussion of someone on YouTube, an antichrist, uh, you know, one of these small antichrists, <laughs> so before the big one comes along. And he says, well, Hamon is very important. It's kind of the key. It's not the key. Hamon could be anywhere. As a matter of fact, Hamon appears in the middle of the two nouns here before the Kai. I don't believe it's like that in, in Titus chapter 2, verse 13. So his 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 point is is fruitless here because the Hamon appears I think after Jesus. Um, let me see Titus chapter two. Let's check out Titus chapter two here. 
Okay, let me see this. Uh, I think it's right away. Where do you see Tito? Let's check this out right here. And then let's go to the. Let's go to. Yeah, it's already in beta anyway. Let me just go like this. And let's go to uh, verse 13. And thank God this is this. I like this app better than the um, Ancient Authority sort of base app because you can scroll down easy, easy, easily. Yeah, easily. And so, like, if I'm using something that's based on the older authorities you know um the prayer issue um uh, can we pray to jesus or not you know um you know john chapter 14 verse 14 things to that effect john 1 18 then i'll be using the most ancient authorities but for this i mean you don't need to it's basically the same thing it says well, where's hey moan at over here right it says uh oh look at this i mean uh, look at the first uh, first now Megalu there. Okay, so Hamon is right after the first noun. Okay, or right in um, Second Peter chapter. I wish I had a side by side for you guys, you know, and I could do that in the future. You know, um, but it's not even close to the same thing here. Hamon is is right before um, Yesu here. And after the first Kai, not the first Kai, but you know what I mean, after the Kai. You know what I mean? It's after the second noun. Now remember the construction here, the rule applies here. You have two nouns connected by a copulative connective Kai, the Greek word for and in Greek. And then you have your article in front of the first noun, in front of megalu, as is uh, megalu, right? And then you don't have any article in front of the second noun, which is soteras. But look at where the hemon is. It's all the way after the, the second noun. Let's see. I don't think we can do the same. We, we can't, you know. I'm going to have to go back over here, and then our memories has to be good. <laughs> okay, you understand? <coughs> If you look at this, you see here, where's the word Jesus here, huh? Hamon. Okay, so Teras, I mean, you see, you see Hamon right before, right before Soteras here. It's right after Soteras in the, in the Titus chapter 2 verse 13. So this Hamon issue that the guy brought up, I, I wish I could remember his name. Sometimes I wish I could forget it if I had, had it in my mind. Okay, it's not the guy that, you know, the, the Trinitarian, of course, it's the other guy, it's the Antichrist. I mean, it's just the guy who doesn't believe that Jesus is God, even though he has to kiss his feet before he's sent to hell, if that's where he's going. I mean, so, over here, Hamon is in a different position than in Titus chapter 2, verse 13, and then he's making the same argument. You can't make the same argument that Hamon is this and Hamon is that. I mean, it's just... You can't. So I'm just saying. I mean, it's in a different position. So Hamon is not critical to the argument here. The formula, okay. Now remember, I said Sir Isaac Newton didn't invent gravity. I mean, I just he explained it, and it's better than anybody else. But gravity, gravity was there before you know before he was born. He just popped on the scene and made us understand things differently. You know, you know what I'm saying. So Sharp didn't invent this you know, rule, in a sense, I mean, these rules are already there in place, I mean, the language was there, let us come down and, and mix up man's speech, let us come down, by the way, you know what I'm saying, what I'm saying, is that, is that, let me see, is that, um, let me check out the word, the, the word, uh, let us come down, okay, let us, let's check this out in, on this, uh, app over here, <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Hi, my love. It's my love, my love. She's being very good, my love, my lovey. My daughter, Anna Devane. She's being very good. A good girl. That's not the app I want, though. <laughs> okay. I wish she could be my assistant. You know what I'm saying? It's hard being legally blind with these things. All right, guys. Now, let me look at Genesis there. Just incidentally, you know what I mean? And let's look at chapter 11. So, um, let me see over here, chapter 11. And then, um, 
And then verse 7, I think. Verse 7, I think this is. And so, uh, let me see here. Uh, well, this is it right here, okay? So let's look at the construction here. Just, just you know, it says over here, come, okay? I come. And I wish I could see it better. Let me see. Uh, let me see if I could get a magnification thing here going on. Because the diacritics is, is very small for me being, like I said, legally blind. You know what I mean? So let me press accessibility. And then we get, I'm using a magnifying glass so at least I can see, you know, some things here, you know. And then um, let me get this, this Hebrew again here. And then uh, that's just the, now I can see the diacritics though, right? Now, like you can see the little dots and dashes and strokes. It says over here, okay, haba. Okay, haba, and that's come, and so that's hey, and then you got the the T looking thingy, that's a uh, A class, and uh, you know that's a uh, commence, ha, and then you have the bet, which is the B in in in, in Hebrew, right? Also could be a V in modern uh, uh Hebrew like bebakasha, right? And then you have your T looking thingy, so that's an, another A class, so uh haba. I hope I said haba because that's that's a that's a that's a hey, haba, and then the hey is silent. That the other h is silent. You know, it's, it's silent though. And then so we have over here, um, let us go down. Let us go down. Okay. Uh, so that's over here. Um, Ner. Da. Okay. So the whole the whole construction for this is near da, and um, let me see my my love my love you okay my love. Yeah. On. Okay. Okay, honey. Okay. And so. Wait for a second, guys. Okay, you got her? She can't, she can't have any food. Did you give her something just now? No. Let's see. I don't think she has any food in her, my love, at all. You, got, you have her, hun? You have her? Yeah. I don't have her, hun. <laughs> <laughs> my love. <laughs> <coughs> Are you sure you have her, hun? So I can end it right now, hun. I can end this right now if you want. Okay. You know, I want to be considerate, you know. Uh, it's hard to concentrate after that, guys, okay? She she can't have any food in her system because she just woke up and, you know, she got fed, like, late last night. Like, you know, it's early in the morning, so she's, she's not going to throw up anything. It's raining outside, incidentally. Okay, so uh, w w where were we at, guys? Okay, so so let us let us go down. And this is probably a subjunctive in uh, in uh, in uh, in Greek. It's just like uh, let us make man. So anyway. It's spelled out Nun Resh Dalet Hey. Okay? So you have you have vowels underneath the consonants. So if something looks like a T, you're probably looking at an A, sometimes an O. And then if you have two 
dots side by side, you see it right all the way in the right-hand corner. Remember, you read Hebrew from right to left, never from left to right unless you're breaking up the syllables. So the sort of telephone, sort of looking thing, like old-fashioned telephone, I mean, that's an, that's an N in Hebrew. It's called the Nun. Remember, in Hebrew, we call it Nu. In biblical Greek, right? But in, in Hebrew, it's noon, N-O-O-N, like good afternoon. So under that, you have two side-by-side -side dots, like a Braille, Braille C, if you read Braille, like I do. I mean, I, I, I know grade one, grade two, I forgot everything, you know, the more advanced Braille, you know. But the side-by-side -side dot sort of thing is an E-class, like in the word they, so it's nay. And then you have the uh, resh, Okay, the hresh, and then you have the schwa underneath it. It's like a braille B, right? Vertical dots. You have horizontal dots underneath the first consonant, nun, and underneath the second consonant, resh, which is the R. Okay, it's an up and down, you know, vertical, you know, set of dots. That's, that's, a, that's a schwa. So the syllable, there's only one syllable there because of that. Okay, so ner. And then you have, right, dalet. Dalit, you have the D. It's like an opposite side looking seven, right? And it almost looks like the, the the resh. It almost looks like the R. But the thing about the D that distinguishes it from the R, you see, they look, you know, almost the same thing, like the same thing. The D has a a, a horn on the upper right hand part, and the R is smooth, it's rounded off. You see, that's the difference. So, it's, you know, in learning Hebrew, you're gonna you have to confront the fact that some letters look alike, and there's only a tiny little thing that will distinguish it from another letter, and that's the D dalet, okay, in Hebrew. And then you have the T-looking, you know, thingy underneath it, and that's an A class, okay. So ner da, so. What about the last letter, which is a hey, like in the Tetragrammaton? This appears twice in the Tetragrammaton. Well, this is silent, okay? So there are letters that you just don't pronounce when it comes to Hebrew words, you know, like the hey, um, you know, um, at times, and then you have the, you know, and then you have the, the Aleph or the Ayin. I mean, you don't pronounce, uh, you know, some of these things sometimes. You know? So, if you want to tell the, the, the Je Jehovah's Witnesses, you want to speak about this verse, you just say, Ner da means, okay, it's easy. Ner da. And then we see the transliteration here. It says, N E R A, okay. Uh, uh, let me see, a uh, D-A-H. Okay. And tagged by the number, okay, uh, 3381, but you're not going to see this construction in your, in your Hebrew Strong's lexicon, okay? And so that's just the deal. You're going to nerda. 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 You see? Let us uh, mix up. So, I mean, you know, this, the, the, the languages were mixed up by God. A long time, you know, uh, Manti came into the picture, and then uh, Sharp, and then uh, all these linguists. Okay? Wonderful linguists. You know what I'm saying? So let's get back to this, though. And let me see if we can get back to it. So the, the rule is when you have two nouns or participles, okay, connected by the capilla to connect to chi, the Greek verb for and, and then you have one article in front of the first noun, and then you don't have another article in front of the second noun, then that is speaking about one person and one person alone. It's very simple. And as a matter of fact, in my next study, I'll have something that I'll draw up myself, okay, um, using sort of a notepad, 
and then hopefully I could write Greek on it and stuff like that and I better take a picture of it because I wrote the whole Theos paradigm and it disappeared okay so I better take a picture of it and save it you know what I mean so this is talking about one person being our God and Savior and he's identified here okay and he's Jesus Christ now that's not denying the Father we believe that our Holy Father, right, is also God. So we're not denying the Father when we're magnifying who Jesus really is in his essential nature. Jesus has two natures, nature one and nature two, or nature A and nature B. Nature one or A has to do with his essential and original nature that wasn't given to him and a nature that he did not take. Okay? The second nature has to do with his humanity, his human nature that he took or taking. Labon, Greek preposition, or participle, actually, I should say. The present active participle, as a matter of fact, is the same sort of construction found and recorded, you know, participial construction anyway, in Hupar Kohn, present active participle. That means that he was both man and God. Okay, all right, at the time that the apostle was writing this under commandment. So what do we have this to close? What do we have here to close? Well, I mean, we, what did we study? I mean, we study, you know, the construction of Simon Peter's name, you know, Simon Peter, uh, Sumeon Petras, and then we found out that he was two things. He's both a doulos, okay, or uh, a slave and an apostle, uh, 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 one that was sent by God one who saw God according to you know uh, verse 5 uh, chapter 9 of uh, 1 Corinthians I mean that's one of the qualifications and then he's an apostle okay is limited is, is limiting what kind of an apostle he is in the, in the servant well he's an apostle of Jesus Christ he's that kind of an apostle He's not an apostle of, uh, you know, of uh, Gamaliel. He's not an apostle of, uh, you know, of, um, of a Herod or, you know, whatever the case may be. You understand what I'm saying? He's an apostle of Jesus Christ. Jesu Christo. You okay, my love? I'm almost finished, honey. I'll burp her. I'm going to be burping her now. <laughs> okay. So, again, the Sharpe's rule has to do with two nouns being connected by the word and in Greek, chi. Two nouns or participles being connected by the word and in Greek, which is chi. And then one noun has... Are you finished, on? Yeah. Okay, I'll be right there, my love, promise. One noun to finish, guys, okay, because I have to birth the baby. One, <laughs> one noun having the or the first noun having the article and then the second noun now ha not having the article well anyway i have to go and then i'll give you examples where this rule doesn't apply sharp's rule doesn't apply like in philippians chapter one verse uh one or two at the beginning of uh, uh galatians the beginning of ephesians and all the way down the line okay we'll look at those and we'll look at where it does apply like in uh you know uh second peter chapter one uh, verse 11, this is Angela Kenyon is giving glory to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And that means that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were very much alive at the time that Jesus spoke that. And they're very much alive now. And no, they didn't go to Beth Shereen. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob uh, wasn't going to appear in Beth Shereen, guys, the house of the princes, sold by the Jehovah's Witnesses after the fact. Take care, guys. Bye-bye now. Don't forget to subscribe. And please uh, give me a comment and give me a thumbs up. Always a thumbs up and never a thumbs down. Okay, how dare you guys. And then we'll check out some more, more uh, full Greek constructions in our next study. Lord willing, we shall do this and that. Take care, guys. Bye-bye now. Blessings to you. Bye. Now I have to birth the baby. <laughs> okay. Take care, guys. Bye.